Hello, this is Professor Eric Steinhardt, uh, and we're going to talk about infinite recursion through compression and acceleration. Let's start with the Royce map. The American philosopher Josiah Royce talked about a perfect map of England in England. But Wyoming is easier because it's square, so let's talk about Wyoming. And to keep it simple, Wyoming contains only one north-south highway and one east-west highway. Plus, it contains a map of itself. There exists a perfect map of Wyoming in Wyoming. It exists in the southeast quadrant of Wyoming, that is, the lower right-hand quarter of Wyoming. There's Wyoming. It's a big square. And those are the two highways, the north-south highway and the east-west highway. But now let's add the map of Wyoming down there in the lower right-hand quadrant. There it is. It's a map of Wyoming. But if it's a map of Wyoming, it has to include the map itself. Ah, oh, there we go. But wait, now there's even more to include. So, yep, and it will just keep going. But if the map of Wyoming is a perfect map, then it's just all there, an infinitely nested structure. The lower right-hand quarter of the map has exactly the same pattern as the whole map. The pattern of the whole is compressed into the part. That's compression. Part of the map has the same pattern as the whole map, and the map is infinite. These four features of the map are going to be connected. So a whole is infinite. What does it mean to say a whole is infinite? A whole is infinite means that the whole contains a part with the same pattern as the whole. The whole contains a copy of itself like mirrors nested in mirrors nested in mirrors, or reflections in reflections in reflections. Now let's talk about the Hilbert paper. Uh, this is named after the mathematician uh, Hilbert. And so the Hilbert paper, it's a square piece of paper. We start the Hilbert paper. We're going to put all the numbers on the Hilbert paper, all the finite natural numbers on the Hilbert paper. Uh, and we're going to start it by dividing it down the middle vertically. We'll divide it again horizontally, and then we'll just write the number 1 in the upper left-hand part. Now we're going to have to do this by accelerating. We do each next act of division and writing the next number twice as fast as the previous act. That's acceleration. So we divide vertically, we divide in half horizontally, and we write the number 2. And we're writing smaller and smaller and faster and faster. Divide again, divide again, write the number 3. Divide again, divide again, write the number 4. And if you accelerate doing every one of these operations twice as fast, you will have, in one minute, an infinite piece of paper, a piece of paper with infinitely many numbers on it. Again, we say that a whole is infinite means that the whole contains a part with the same pattern as a whole. The whole contains a copy of itself. The Hilbert paper does contain a part with the same pattern as the whole. The Hilbert paper contains a copy of itself, and the Hilbert paper is infinite. Let's look at a thing called the Cantor box. Uh, you can see the pattern here. You know, you first divide down the middle vertically, then go to the next half, divide it in half horizontally, then divide vertically, horizontally, vertically, horizontally, vertically, horizontally. If you did that at an accelerating pace, drawing each next division twice as fast, then in one minute you could have a box divided into infinitely many parts. Or you might just say that the Cantor box simply exists. It's a box that just contains this pattern. And you can see that there's the number one, uh, there's the second region, there's the third region, there's the fourth region, and there will be infinitely many regions, uh, infinitely many subparts of the Cantor box. The Cantor box contains a part with the same pattern as the whole. The Cantor box contains a copy of itself. That is, each, right, each uh, lower right-hand corner of the box is a copy of the whole box. And so the Cantor box is infinite. Let's do a recursive cross. Here again, you'd have to do, if you want the cross to be done in a finite period of time, you have to accelerate, do every next uh, crossing action twice as fast. We start with a cross. Cross each of the arms of the cross. Cross the arms again. Cross all the arms. And do it again. Do it again. 
And if you do this infinitely many times by accelerating always twice as fast, in the end you will have an infinitely detailed cross. This is a kind of fractal cross, um, and you can see that each quarter of the cross, each arm of the cross, the big quarter area, has the same structure as the whole. So the recursive cross contains a part with the same pattern as the whole, it contains a copy of itself, and so the recursive cross is infinite. Uh, these are recursive patterns in general. These are examples of recursive patterns. You can search the internet for images of things like the Sierpinski Triangle, the Menger Sponge, or just get into looking at fracti uh, fractals. Fractals are infinitely self-nested and self-detailed structures. What about the number line? We say the number line is infinite, so that must mean it contains a copy of itself. But how? Here's the number line, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Here's a copy of the line in the line, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. It's just the even numbers. The even numbers are a copy of the line in the line. The number line contains a copy of itself, which contains a copy of itself, which contains a copy of itself, and so it goes. How does that work? Well, the line contains an infinitely nested self-copy. You take the number line that contains the even numbers, which is a copy of the line in the line. But there's a copy of the even numbers in the even numbers. Those are the numbers that proceed by fours. There's a copy of those numbers in those numbers, proceed by eights, then count by sixteens, and so it goes. Thank you.